Hi, my name is Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's video is about Hugh Latimer, the Tudor bishop. He saw archery as a metaphor for life, but unfortunately, he would meet a fiery end when he was burnt at the stake for heresy. So Hugh Latimer was born in Thurcaston, just north of Leicester in the Midlands of England, 1485. His father was a yeoman farmer, didn't own the land he farmed, earned about uh, between three and four pounds a year. So he wasn't a wealthy man, but he was a yeoman. And Hugh's earliest memory is helping to strap on his father's armour just before the Battle of Blackheath. That's 1497. Uh, now, his father wanted more for Hugh, wanted to better his life. So Hugh started school apparently when he was around four years of age, but he entered Cambridge University at the age of 14. Can you imagine that? Entering university just at the age of 14. But times were different way back then. So it was while at Cambridge that Hugh Latimer becomes a, a priest, an ordained Catholic priest, and he regarded himself as an obstinate Papist, dead set against the Protestant movements. Martin Luther, dead against him. And yet at the same time, Cambridge University, it's a cauldron of debate. Thomas Cranmer, William Tyndale, Nicholas Ridley, famous names debate this new religion, Reformation. And there's another one, Thomas Bilney, who also gives sermons, which Hugh Latimer actually listened to, and he was a bit inspired by what's going on. However, Bilney falls foul of Cardinal Wolsey. He's arrested, taken to London, held in prison, questioned. He's released in 1529, but upon his release, he goes back to Cambridge, and he asks Hugh Latimer to take his confession. Overnight, Hugh Latimer listens to the words of Bilney and it changes his mind on his outlook on religion. So overnight, Hugh Latimer becomes a religious reformer. He questions the transubstantiation, the body and blood of Christ with the bread and the, and the sacrament wine. And he begins to make sure that he sets an example as a good Christian. He visits prisoners, looks after the needy, the hungry. He feeds them. But in 1531, Bilney is burned at the stake for heresy in Norwich. And this deeply affects Hugh Latimer. It affects him for the rest of his life. Latimer himself was actually arrested under the orders of the Archbishop of Canterbury. He was held in London and investigated for heresy. And you can imagine the questioning for that would have been quite severe. But he gained his release with the help of none other than Thomas Cromwell. Now, that is a name in the Tudor history of Henry VIII. What a guy, Thomas Cromwell. He had apparently said to Henry VIII, the king then, this uh, Hugh Latimer might be helpful in the forthcoming divorce from Catherine of Aragon, known as the king's great matter. Before I go on, I'd like to mention about Hugh Latimer's beliefs. He was a reformer, but he wanted reform not as we would say, you know, break with Rome, all of that kind of thing. He wanted reform in a different way. One of his things was, why spend money lighting candles for the departed? Because that money goes into the church. The church was often opulent. The higher ups of the church spent an awful lot of money on themselves. He wanted that to be reformed. He wanted monasteries to spend more time, more money looking after the poor, educating people. Also, it was at this time that the Bible had been translated from Latin into English. And there was this belief now that people should be allowed to study the Bible, not be told, no, you can't. It's nothing to do with you. The priest will tell you what's to be done. This is part of their reforming of religion. So what happens next is Hugh Latimer becomes embroiled, becomes part of the story of Henry VIII. He is on the panel that debates the legality of Henry VIII's marriage to Catherine of Aragon. And in fact, it leads to the divorce of Catherine of Aragon. For his part in this, it will cost him his life. So it's in the court of Henry VIII that Hugh Latimer becomes the royal chaplain. 
And his first sermon, 1530, in front of his new champion, Anne Boleyn, was a great success. So much so that the king gave him an extra five pounds. That's pretty much the wages of a friar for the year. So he's doing all right. His first sermon, major success. And Hugh Latimer accompanies the king and queen on their royal progress, which goes all down through the Cotswolds in Gloucestershire. And it was at Hales Abbey, there's a bit of an incident. And this reflects what Hugh Latimer was about. Why burn money for candles when you could give that money to the poor? Why do pilgrimages when that money could have been used to keep the family secure? or go to help those in need, or education. This was his idea. You see, at Hales Abbey, they had a vial of blood, and that blood was said to be the actual blood of Christ from when he was crucified. Well, it was investigated. Hugh Latimer was part of this, and it was found to be nothing more than one case said duck's blood, but another said it was just red candle wax and it was proven to be false. And the whole thing was revealed in London. Bit of a sensation. But this was what he was about. He was about the fraud, the opulence. Education helped the poor. This was his message through and through. And he became the Bishop of Worcester in 1535. So, yes, he is climbing, but still his beliefs are coming through each time you read about him you think to yourself okay yeah right i can understand where he's coming from but the next stage of his life wow turbulent or what so in 1539 hugh latimer is forced to resign his see his bishopric of worcester this is a very dangerous time for him he is investigated for heresy several times and when thomas cromwell falls out of favor with henry the eighth hugh latimer basically disappears to the shadows of the court. As I say, he was investigated several times for heresy. In fact, just a couple of months in the last part of Henry VIII's reign, he is imprisoned. But when Edward VI is crowned 1547, then Hugh Latimer is brought back into the royal court. He refuses a bishopric. He doesn't want it. However, he becomes a priest to the royal court. And in front of the boy king, Edward VI, he gives his most, well, in my book, it's his most famous sermon. And I'm going to read you a little part of it, and perhaps you'll understand why I am a bit of a fan of Hugh Latimer. So this is just a small part of Hugh Latimer's sermon to the boy king, Edward VI. There are pages of the stuff. But what it's designed to is trying to guide people to a better life. But let me just read this little piece. Charge upon them their allegiance, that this single benefit of God may be practised, and that it be not turned into bowling, glossing, and whoring within the towns. For they be negligent in executing the laws of shooting. In my time, my poor father was as diligent to teach me to shoot as to learning me of other things. And so I think other men did their children. He taught me how to draw, how to lay my body in the bow, how not to draw with strength of arms as other nations do, but with the strength of the body. I had my bows bought me according to my age and strength. As I increased in them, so my bows were made bigger and bigger. For men shall never shoot well, except they be brought up in it. It is a goodly art, a wholesome kind of exercise, and much commended in physic. Wow. He retired back home to Thurcaston in 1550, but he only had a few years to enjoy his retirement because the sister to Edward VI comes to the throne on the premature death of our boy king. So the young King Edward, Edward VI, dies. His sister comes to the throne, Mary, 1553. But don't forget Mary. Mary I, Bloody Mary, was a Catholic. And she will have her revenge on the Protestant reformers, especially those who sat on the panel that gave Henry VIII the divorce from her mother, Catherine of Aragon. Don't forget that Mary's mom was Catherine of Aragon. 
And of course, one of those who sat on the panel was Hugh Latimer. He will find himself arrested and thrown into the Tower of London. So many of those Protestant reformers were arrested and thrown into the Tower that they had to share the cells. They were overcrowded. So later on, Hugh Latimer, together with his old friend from his Cambridge days, Nicholas Ridley, will be transferred to Bacardo Prison in Oxford to await their trial and ultimately their fate. Interestingly, the trial of Ridley and Latimer, one version says they were tried on charges of treason, others that it was heresy. Well, they were found guilty and they're going to be executed. They're going to be burned at the stake for heresy. The 16th of October, 1555. And I've got written down here the words from Hugh Latimer to his friend, Nicholas Ridley. They are tied to the stake in the town ditch, as it so happens in Oxford, back to back. And this is what Hugh Latimer says to his friend. Be of good comfort, Master Ridley, and play the man. We shall this day light a candle by God's grace in England, as I trust shall never be put out. Hugh Latimer died quick, but Master Ridley was not so lucky. The flames burnt past him. They set fire to his legs and burnt his nether regions. He cried out to God. People were so upset by what they saw that they threw extra faggots on the fire to try and bring the flames up, which eventually they did, and they exploded the gunpowder around his neck, and he was no more. If you walk through the streets of the city centre of Oxford, you'll come across, a, a literally a cross in the pavement that marks the spot where Latimer and Ridley were actually put to death, the martyrs of Oxford. You know, reading about Hugh Latimer, and the others, I was impressed by their beliefs, by their honesty. But with Hugh Latimer, I truly found a connection. There he was, an Englishman. What a good man he was, the way he cared for the poor, the needy, the prisoners who were locked up. An honest man, his word was his bond. But for me, most importantly, he was a bowman, a long bowman, just like me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, like, share and subscribe. And if you'd like to support our channel further, take a look at our Patreon community. The link is in the description. Now, guys, if you're waiting for a Patreon shout out, you haven't heard your names yet. These videos, we don't put them out in order. So just stand by now for this video. A shout out for three Patreon members. Now I'm going to read these names. We have Adam Deal, Gregory Townsend and EOD. We remember. Hey guys, thanks a million. Bye for now.